Welcome to Morea. These are my adventures in biology on the island of the yellow lizard. Dolphins in captivity. Yes, at the intercontinental Morea, there are dolphins in captivity. Despite being slightly trepidatious about the purposes of keeping large cetaceans, I did accept the intercontinental's invitation for me to learn more. Another fantastic morning here in Morea. I'm here with Jan, who is the director of the Morea Dolphin Center, which is located again within the intercontinental Morea. And uh, I'm so excited because we're actually going to get to know a few of the animals. You've just beckoned one of them over. So we have a little guy coming over, and his name is Kuokowa. Wow, so smooth. The way I communicate with the dolphin, we use body language, yep. hand signals. So every time I will provide a signal, Koa will understand the behavior that I'm looking for. Yep. And every time I'm having Koa moving around with the people, I just mold him in the water. Right? Yes. So I just like bring Koa over. And how comes he doesn't move? Because I'm still in contact with him. Ah, so he knows. But for you to realize the sensitivity of it, I'm just gonna have my finger just touching his body. Okay. And then, and when he will realize that my finger is not on his body anymore, he will turn. So he knows I'm there, he knows I'm there, he knows I'm there. And I'm there, right? <laughs> so we like, like you say, to hug, to shake hands, to kiss each other. That's human, yes. right? We don't want to be anthropocentric. Exactly. And this say that because I like yeah. being touched and shake hands and kiss, so they, they do. Like it. I'm immediately moved, both by Koa himself, but also by the clear relationship between Jan and Koa. And this isn't about hugs and kisses, as Jan explains. He has way too much respect for his colleagues to reduce it to that. If you want to go to thrust, and if you want to reach that thrust with food, you lost the game. Yeah. I mean, the dolphins, if they realize that the only relationship that they have with you it's is like in order provider. to get fed, yeah. at noon, just cancel all the afternoon programs. In opera and conditioning, you include the concepts of classical conditioning, Pavlov, opera and conditioning, Skinner. Yeah, these are, you know, concepts in, in uh, philosophy. It is a science, a yeah. There is a science yeah, behind, behind it. Behind yeah. it, yeah. It's, it's so much more than just jumping in the water with the dolphins. Absolutely. At the Moria Dolphin Center, we have the tourist aspects of the dolphins, but we also have a strong research component. You just finished your master's degree. So I, I actually um, did a, a study on visual cognitions. I am very interested about the way we communicate with them. And in delphinariums, the main communication tool is body language, hand signal. I was really, really interested about what is going inside and how do they interpret those signs, right? So, and we cannot communicate them using like echolocation, Echo, yeah, obviously, we because we're not <laughs> auditory uh, species. So uh, they have to adapt to visual species yes. and we do build a relationship with the visual world. It's really refreshing to see the interest in research, the respect for your communication patterns with the animal, but of course I'm still sure and I know that a lot of the viewers watching are going to want to hear it. Uh, what is your position then when people are vehemently against having cetaceans in captivity? I mean it's got to come up, right? <laughs> yeah, it, it is a very, very hard uh, discussion to have and it's highly complicated because it goes to the ethics what why do we give such uh, such a high level of ethic on a dolphin but not on a pig yeah why no, do we eat pig why do we kill pigs and why don't we kill dolphins what about the coast yeah. what about yeah. I mean we eat so many animals and it's industrial and I we mean, don't treat them well either no we don't Jan raises another interesting point about the history of humans keeping mammals in captivity. We, we had the first uh, people that wanted to domesticate the wolves, like so long ago. And now everybody has a dog. Good point. And everybody <laughs> has a dog. So the first time they had a wolf, it was a wild species. And millions of years later, we have like so many different species of dogs and they're living with us. The issue of keeping cetaceans in captivity is a complicated one. At the Maria Dolphin Center, we are dealing with people who are clearly aware of that and that clearly have a respect for the animals they're working with. 
So humans that want to call them out on this better also have an agenda for all of the other animals that may be in captivity. There are a lot of points to be raised here and a lot of discussions to be had, but I for one am very impressed and I'm happy that I got a chance to visit this place. Coming up, I get my geek on about some of the local flora. You can see the tree of the guava right there. Where, where, where? Oh! There's all kind of. Stay tuned or subscribe to my channel for more of my adventures in biology.